Now then, ladies and gents, hope you're all fettling well. James here from thatthereLandPowerTV.com and today you find me in Saxon, which is in Suffolk. I am at the home of Class UK and today the manufacturer is putting on its own grass forage equipment uh, demonstration day. So, should be good stuff. We've got a hell of a lineup of machines. You might be able to see one or two behind me there. So, we've got pretty much uh, the whole lineup. Uh, we've got uh, mowers, we've got teddies. We got rakes, we got round balers, we got square balers, and then the big headline act, we got the class Jaguar Forager, which you might be able to see just behind me poking its nose out. So, like I say, it should be good stuff. What we're going to do, we've got Mr. Dean Cotty from uh, Class UK, who is pretty much Mr. Forage, uh, grass forage equipment in these parts. So, he's going to be giving the presentations today. We're going to chuck a mic on him, we're going to point the cameras at him, we're going to probably annoy him a little bit. So, that's the plan, that's the crack. Uh, yeah, grab a brew, settle down, and we'll see what we can find. <laughs> So first of all, we'll bring our first tractor and mower into operation for you. So on the back of tractors, uh, Carol's tractor is a Disco 28. So this is our entry level mower range. So the best way to describe it, our Disco mower models are made up of three series. The 10 series, the 100 series and the 1000 series. Every time we go up a series, we gain specification, we gain a bit more weight and also a, a more increase in output. So we look at this one to start with. Disco 28, unfortunately the number doesn't really help you. This is a 2.6 metre mower, not a 2.8 metre mower. And it's the mid-size model. So we offer a Disco that's smaller down to 2.2, 2.6 or a 3 metre mower, all in this format here. And that is a mower non-conditioner only. But even though it's our basic mower, it still has a lot of nice features to it. So number one, Carol, it's a nice easy job for him to get the mower set. No need to put a tape measure out and measure underneath the gearbox or a link arm. Nice and easy from the cab. He can look back and there's a little guide here on the pin suspension mount. So we can actually see it's right in the middle of the travel and crucially on the little red mark. So he knows full well it's bang on the right height for him to work. Again, suspension setup, nice and simple with two springs. The heaviest spring you see here, still easy to adjust, carries the weight on the far end of the mower, and you see the light spring here carries the weight on the near end of the mower. But the nice important thing, if you were to line up this spring here, it goes all the way to the center of the mower bed. So even though it's sprung and mounted from one side, we actually take the line of um, the suspension to the center of gravity on the mower to try and give it the best contour ability to follow the ground both left and right. Again, other nice simple little features, it's nice and easy to get adjusting any belt tension if we need to. And again, nice little features, there's no safety chains on the shaft. We actually use high specification Walter Scheid shaft here, so actually it clicks and locks in, so there's no need to go putting chains on the mower either. So as you see Carol working down across the field, what you notice on the right hand side we have our swath board. Standard on all our mowers to try and pull the grass away from the standing crop. And also you see Carol there with his lights on, so even our basic mower still comes standard with road lights so you can be seen to get down the road. Next up on the back of Trevor's tractor is a Disco 320C. So you see we've now jumped from the 10 series to the 100 series. The first thing you notice is the mower looks a bit heavier. So this machine in the same format, the same width as the previous mower is about 50 to 100 kilos heavier. And that extra weight has got into things like the headstock and the suspension system because it's designed for more work, more output and slightly bigger tractors. So a 320C is a 3 metre mower or 10 foot in old money available with or without a conditioner. The machine you see here today has a conditioner and that's why we have the little C designation here at the end. You notice because we have the extra weight of the conditioner, wider working width, two heavy springs on the top, and then we still have the lighter spring you see just here. If we actually were to look at the mower bed itself, we said earlier we pretty much use the same mower bed throughout our entire Disco range. So high specification is built into all models. The difference is the previous mower had bolted blades. This machine has got quick release blades. So nice and easy for Trevor. It takes the lever you see here, 
put it underneath the mowing disc, bends it down to compress the spring, that opens the little clevis pin, and then we can take the blades out or turn them around if we need to as well. So ever so nice and simple. And just like before, ever so easy to set because Trevor puts his linkage to the right height so that the red mark lines up where it should do. If we look at the conditioner in a bit of detail, all conditioners on class mowers have steel tines as standard. And we do that for a couple of reasons. The first, compared to nylon or plastic tines you might see on different machines, these have almost zero wear. So when Trevor's going conditioning like he is today, or maybe in 10 years time, he has the same conditioning effect. If we do hit obstacles such as stones and nasties, for example, if we were to look underneath here, those conditioning tines are pushed into place and held there by rubber bushes. And those rubber bushes then compress if we were to go hitting stones or nasties that go through the mower. Again, maybe the tines will bend, for example, and there's a special tool that we can offer that either straightens them out or you can replace them if necessary as well. And especially with the, the uh, steel tines and then being forced into position, you get a very aggressive conditioning effect. But if you don't need the heavy conditioning effect, you can adjust it with a little lever just here. This moves the baffle plate in the top of the hood to give us a more aggressive conditioning, for example, to really wilt it faster. Or we can open it up to be a lot more gentle on the crop, maybe because the conditions are slightly lighter. On the back of Dan's tractor, you see a Disco 3200C, and this is by far our most popular mower without an entire Disco range. And like we said before, we now move up to the 1000 series. So you see just here, again, C for conditioner. And this is our high specification, high output machines, really aimed at large scale farms and contractors. So when we say high specification, what's different than before? Well, it still uses our three meter max cut mower bed, which I'll come on to in a moment. But the big difference here is the suspension system. So instead of having the mechanical springs, this has a hydro pneumatic or hydraulic suspension system. So the way it works, you have a big hydraulic cylinder built into the main frame that's responsible for folding the mower for transport or putting it back down to work. And you have the much smaller diameter cylinder here on the back of the main frame. So what Dan can do from the tractor cab is he can use his spool valve to increase and decrease the hydraulic pressure in this cylinder. That's displayed on the little gauge you see just here. Why would you do it? So say for example, Dan sets off down across the field and he suddenly finds a wet spot or something that's maybe a bit rough. If he finds that wet spot, for example, instead of smearing all the nice grass into the mud, he increases that pressure and effectively we carry more of the mower's weight onto the tractor. So for example, we can have maybe as little as 50 kilos on the ground. So again, it just glides over the wet bit. Then when he gets back to the drier part of the field, he lowers the pressure again, all on the move, back down to where he needs it, and he can see it all on the pressure gauge target just here. The other difference as well, you notice the suspension arm comes all the way over the top, and then it goes to the center of the machine. Again, the big advantage with this, it allows an even bed pressure all the way along its full working width, and we get far more contouring both left and right as we're working. Also, as you saw Dan come in to park up here, you'll notice the transport system is very different. Instead of the mower being at 90 or 95 degrees, this one goes all the way over to 120. So if we're going down the road, it's actually nice and balanced. He's got roughly the same weight on both the left and right hand side of the tractor, and also it keeps it very short. If you were to imagine the mower maybe was to fold back around and he had a front as well, it means it's a very long outfit. Whereas this, very short, very even weight distribution. The other part on this mower again, we said about high specification, this one's been fitted with our spreader vanes. So if you look at the conditioning hood just here, you see all the little black turnbuckles on the top. What that allows Dan to do, if for example, he was gonna maybe cut this field and make hay of it, and he wants to dry it much faster, he can adjust all those baffles along the back and get a full width spread of grass out the back of the mower. Or like he's gonna do here this morning, we've got those shut in a bit narrower to leave it in a swath, for example. So again, full width spread or a nice tidy swath. 
But the heart of any disco mower really is that max cut mower bed that we mentioned earlier. And that's what I'd like to go through in a little bit more detail. So with our max cut mowers, the mower beds, they're designed and built in our factory in Bad Salgo in the south of Germany. And the very unique thing with our max cut mower bed is how it's produced. So the base plate effectively is pressed to form its shape. We insert all the drivetrain into their mower bed and then we bolt the top cover plate to it. You will find no welds anywhere on the mower bed. The big advantage of that is we're reducing the potential of any cracks and heat stresses to go into it. If you look at any mower or digger or any secondhand machine and there's a leak or there's a crack, I guarantee they'll be by a weld. And by removing all the welds, it means the bed is much stronger and much more rigid and lasts a lot longer. And when we go to a wider one, for example, if we go to our flagship Disco 4400, which is four meters wide, instead of bolting another module on, we just use longer base plates. So again, single pieces of steel, pressed to form the shape and then bolted together to make them a lot stronger. Also on the mower bed itself, we have a nice unique feature in that we mount the mowing disc right to the very front of the mower bed. The reason we do that, if you imagine as the disc rotates, we're trying to get a full 180 degree rotation of the blade actually mowing. Where you see the mowers that have the mowing disc in the center of the mower bed, you're only really cutting for maybe 140 or 150 degrees. And that reduction affects the overlap of the blade in between each of the individual mowing discs. So you see in the field here, nice clean stubble because we have plenty of blade overlap. Where you have the disc in the center of the mower bed, you lose the overlap. And especially when the grass has gone flat or it's tangly, that's when you start to see a scruffier stubble left behind it. On the front of Cole's tractor, we have a Disco 3200 FC Move. Now this is one of two different types of front mower that we offer. So we offer a three meter with or without conditioner, but we either offer a profile mower or like you see here today, the Move mower. Now the big difference between the two mowers is how you lift and lower them. So the mower you see here today, the Move gets its Move name from the fact that it lifts up and down or moves independent of the tractor link arms. So what Cole's gonna show you now is he can lift the front mower up up and the link arms will stay where they are and then again drops the mower down and again link arms remain rigid. A nice simple thing for Cole to set as well, he's got a nice little guide here on the headstock. So to make sure the link arms are at the right height, as long as the two arrows line up when the mower's on the ground, he's absolutely perfect and ready to go mowing. As an option if you want to, you can put some chains across here to make sure the link arms are in the right position. So you see in the top of here, two hydraulic cylinders. One gives us lift and lower, and one gives us hydraulic bed pressure change. So you can go across the field again and put more weight on the tractor or put more weight of the mower on the ground. Another nice few features with this tractor or this mower you see here, just like before, mower and conditioner, but conditioner is a belt driven system. So instead of having shaft drive to the conditioners, we do it with belts, the same on the previous mower, the same on the mowers behind as well. The reason we like our belt drive for the conditioners, great at transmitting lots of power, very simple and also very forgiving. So say for example, Colin was to go across there mowing and he finds fence posts, set of chain harrows that someone's left behind before, lumps of stones for example, the belts can slip a tiny bit, take that shock load out that gearboxes can't give you for example. So again, very simple, very efficient and also very forgiving. Nice simple features as well, the mowers come standard you see here with the road lights, if you want to you can fold them down so you can see past them, but a very popular option to have on the machines is the front mirror kit. So we can have a pair of very wide angle mirrors that sit here on the front. So you can imagine where I'm stood and where Colin sat, there's quite a distance. So if he's gonna pull out onto a road, for example, he has to get a long way out before he can actually see. Having the wide angle mirror kit means Cole can see from where he sat, both left and right, to actually pull out onto the road without seeing a car coming in the direction. When I move on to the back of Cole's tractor, you see Disco 8500Cs. So this is an 8.1 meter wide working width, probably our most popular triple mower setup. 
So again, it's still using three meter mowers, similar to what you've seen on the front. And just like the previous mower, again, contour suspension. So center pivot on both sides and hydraulic pressure built into the system as well. But again, we try and give our mowers the biggest factor of safety as possible. So where you have brake back on the single mowers, we employ a similar system on the triple mowers as well. So if you were to look, for example, just here, this is the brake back device. But the crucial thing is we have it the same on the left mower as well as the right. So if, for example, Cole was to go through a bit of a hole or hit something in the field, this mower could come backwards and that one remains exactly where it is. Instead of maybe a cheaper system that pivots one forward and the other one back, individual hydraulic suspension and also individual brake back to it as well. Depending on the specification of the machine, when you go to wider mowers, you can have the same as this, which are a pre-selection control effectively, or if you go for the business model as opposed to the contour name you see here, Cole would have load sensing hydraulics. So that would mean, for example, on the joystick that he's got in his right hand, he can allocate buttons to pick up the front mower, the left mower, or the right mower, all individually. So again, lots of options for different configurations. And again, we offer different sizes as well. So this is the smallest at 8.1 meters. We go up to 8.9 meters. And we even offer the Disco 1100s, which telescope in and out and get us well over 10 meters in terms of working width. So if you look into the back of the mowers, if you were to pay particular attention to the mowing discs, especially on this side, you can really see it. You'll notice some of the discs are painted red, some of the discs are painted black. Again, there's plenty of people, probably many of you in this field that have been mowing for longer than I've been alive, but it still happens on odd occasions, people put the wrong blades on the wrong discs, and you'll end up with the disc turning left and it's got the blades from the disc turning right. So try and make it easy for everyone, all our new mowers now come with colour coordinated blades and also discs. So you put the red blades on the red discs and you put the black blades on the black discs. So again, nice and simple to make sure someone has the right blades on the right side. Again, still the blades are reversible so you can turn them over when they get worn or damaged if possible.